Nelson Mandela became South Africa's first democratically elected president in 1994. It was the official end of white minority rule, otherwise known as apartheid. Apartheid, you've heard of it, but what exactly was it? I'm Francesca Fiorentini, and this is AJ+. Apartheid is an Afrikaans word that means separateness. It was a system of racial segregation that governed South Africa for nearly 50 years. It specifically aimed to protect the domination of the white South Africans over non-whites in every aspect of life. But it didn't just appear out of thin air. During the colonial grab for the country between the Dutch-descended Afrikaners and the British, the rights of native black South Africans were sidelined. So when apartheid was officially made law in 1948 by the Afrikaner-led National Party, it was a continuation of injustices already happening. Afrikaners believed that South Africa was their God-given homeland and that the white race was superior. The black majority was therefore seen as a threat. There were 148 apartheid laws. Blacks had to carry ID permits at all times and had to obey strict curfews. Public facilities were separated for white and non-white use, and marriages between whites and other races were banned. People were classified into four racial categories, white, black, Indian, and colored. People of mixed race. And they were all separated into different residential areas. Blacks were divided into 10 so-called homelands based on tribal groups. Homelands were rural, overcrowded, and lacked jobs, forcing blacks to seek work as migrant laborers. Wages were low, and it was illegal for workers to strike. See, apartheid was also economically motivated. A cheap workforce was needed particularly to work in the country's gold mines. Powerful mining magnets had a huge stake in apartheid policies since their profits depended on keeping black wages low. Outside their designated homelands, non-whites had no political rights. Since they were not technically citizens, they couldn't vote. Education? Also divided. The state set up a separate education system for blacks that received a fraction of the funding that white schools did. Mandatory education ended at age 13 and was structured to funnel blacks into menial migrant labor. Exploitation by design. Needless to say, there was resistance to these insane laws. Protests were often led by black students and youth and were met with severe repression. Out of these struggles came leaders like Nelson Mandela, Oliver Tambo, and Walter Sisulu, who would help bring an eventual end to apartheid. So now that you know what apartheid was, could you imagine living under it? Are there any similarly unjust laws that still exist where you live? Leave us your comments below. Peace and reconciliation. Hello everybody, it is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan, his heart don't pump no Kool-Aid, Sadiq, right. and this is the second edition of Don't Believe the Hype, where we ask you to go beneath the surface of everything that you've heard to see if it's true yourself. Donovan gave a great analogy last segment where he says, think of the Wizard of Oz. Now, the Wizard of Oz, he is the man behind the curtain, and you know, yeah. by the looks of it and the sounds of it, we think he's this big, powerful man. He's just, you know, giant. But then when you pull back the curtain, it's like, oh, you little poor soul. <laughs> yes, yes. You wouldn't harm a fly. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's what we're asking you to do is pull back the curtain, for lack of better words. And so anyway, we're going to get right into it. We are going to talk about uh, Julius Malema and uh, the EFF, Economic Freedom Fighters. Uh, who is Julius Molina? Well, I'm going to get into that. So Julius Molina is the president of the EFF uh, political party in South Africa. It's one of three parties, the other one being the um, world-renowned, or the most famous, rather, the, the oldest ANC. one, the ANC, um, that 25 years ago saw the changing of the guard in that uh, the first black president was nominated to that party, that being um, Nelson Mandela, who is now deceased. Mandela, Mandela, right. Mandela. So then Julius Malema was actually, uh, he joined the uh, ANC, the African National Congress, when he was only 10 years old, and he became like a youth um, type leader in there mm -hmm. up until 2013, when he was kicked out 
for um, <laughs> hate speech and, right. and this is what they're saying, I'll hate speech you. and you know going against the grain. And so at that point, he decided to form the EFF, Economic Freedom Fighters um, Party, where they have challenged the status quo. Uh, what's the status quo of uh, go along and get along? Mm -hmm. And so their mission... Time and time. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Right. And then there's also another party called the DA Party, uh, mm -hmm. Democratic Alliance, mm -hmm. where they're more like a, cent uh, a central or uh, centrist group, I guess you can say. Okay. Um, and uh, the EFF is more to the left, like way to the left. Mm -hmm. um, and so the EFF and Julius Malema was like, yo, we're not going along for the let's get along with everybody. Let's mm -hmm. wait. Let's, you know, see if, for lack of better words, the white people over there are going to do right by the indigenous people of the land. And so we are going to take it back. Now, what does that mean when we're taking it back? We are what they call um, expropriations, uh, uh, expropriations without compensation. What? Which means we are taking back the land and we ain't giving you white people nothing for it because you took it from us. Okay? From our cold, dead hands. Right. And so why is this going on? Because uh, African people, black people in Africa, South Africa, are they represent 80% of the population, but they own and control less than 10% of the wealth. And so they're like, yo, obviously there's a little unevenness here. And so we need to take it back clearly. You white people who came over here from wherever you came from, you're not going to give it back to us. You're going to hold on to it. And so we want our land back. Well, the thing is, there was supposed to be, uh, this is called the Rainbow Nation. There was supposed to be some reconciliation that went down after uh, right. Nelson and Mandela got it. That never now, happened. how many years has it been? 25. And you're saying less than 10% of the wealth has been distributed to right. 80% of so the people? Right, and so it's it's like slow. It's like a slow. You have a thought that has a slow leak, and it's like... <laughs> right. You know, and it, it and, just never pulls. Because and the, it, and the yeah. longer you uh, put it off, it gets bigger. And bigger. Yeah, but uh, except for this time, it's not getting bigger. It's or, just <laughs> or, or or is it more like a trickle down economics in the United States? It never trickles right. Down. I guess you could look at it that way. And so Julius Malema and the EFF are like, we're no, we're not waiting for anybody to do right by us. And so now the, um, the ANC has a new president Cyril Ramaphosa, who uh, Julius Malema uh, continuously accuses them when they meet in the parliament uh they cont continuously accuses him of placating the white people mm -hmm. you're scared of white folks you you know you're, you're you got all these white people making all these decisions this that and the other mm -hmm. no we need to think about black people first and so his ideology is we're not going to play nice anymore mm -hmm. he's had enough we've had enough and we are tired of waiting and so they have an election that's coming up in May of this year. Okay. Um, the, you know, their national, I guess what you call election uh, mm -hmm. between the ANC, because there's three parties, the ANC, the DA, and the EFF. The ANC holds uh, about 295 seats. It's 400 altogether. So the ANC holds four, uh, 295. Um, the DA holds about 80 seats, and then the EFF holds 25. And so some people are saying, well, yeah, that's kind of a long shot. Will they win? You know, don't, don't never be know. Surprised. However... There's a lot of people involved with the uh, EFF with party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people are just sick of it. We're sick of waiting. And so, as I said, he continuously holds our president, Ramaphosa, to task. Like, you're not doing anything. You got in here. We elected you. And you're pretty much doing the same, same thing. Same thing as the other guy. Yeah. And so, it's been times where uh, interviewers and stuff have asked um, Malima, well, how did you feel about Mandela? He says, well, obviously, I love Mandela. He mm -hmm. served under him as well. And mm -hmm. he said, but Mandela did it his way. He did it his way, and now it, it worked for them. Sure. You know, apartheid ended. Just like Martin Luther King, he did it his right. way. Right. And so now we need to do it our way. Mm -hmm. you, you guys, in the same thing with, the, like you said, the civil rights movement, that's kind of where I was going with this. Mm -hmm. With the civil rights movement, those people, those people being Martin Luther King and all, those people Baby with voters. him, mm -hmm. they, you know, brought about, you know, voters' rights mm -hmm. and you know, civil Pretty rights, and all, all that other stuff, action. right? Mm -hmm. But just like them <coughs> and just like us, we've been stagnant ever since we got over that initial mm -hmm. hump. You give us a few, you put a few people in some positions yes. and... Problem solved. Right. And so he's like, we're not falling for that anymore. We are now taking it back. And there are, you know, and he's also, because I listened to a, a clip today where he was uh, telling uh, uh, Ramaphosa, yo, you got all these people in this, uh, in your cabinet, the, the minister of this, the mm -hmm. minister of that. And he says, it's all bullcock. And I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. obviously. 
If you just got people with titles who aren't doing anything, it's a waste of resources and money. Mm -hmm. You're not about this life. You're just trying to give everybody a role, but nobody is just like smoke and mirrors. Is what right. it is. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate uh -huh. real quick. Um, a lot of people will say, especially the white people, or the South Africaners and stuff like that will say, mm -hmm. you know, you got uh, Malima saying all this stuff, but yet he's a very wealthy landowner himself. Well, I mean, aren't most presidents very wealthy? Yeah, but they're saying, you know, you're talking about taking land from somebody else. Why don't you lead by example? Why? But why own? I got to give up my land? I'm black. That's a good point. I mean, ain't nobody I'm asking just, Trump to give up it. his wealth. Right, I'm just playing. Nobody asked it. any of the other presidents mm -hmm. to give up his wealth. I mean, why? So right. why? I'm sure Ramaphosa's not living in um, poverty either. Right, right. But so, I mean, my thing is this. I don't have a problem with the leader having something as long as they want us to have it too. Okay, gotcha. You know what I mean? Because, of course, people, that, that that's the, the banana in the tailpipe. Well, you know, Malim was talking about getting the land back. Why don't he give his land back? Because I'm black and I want my land, right. too. And this is my land, right. Right. Okay. We ain't talking about me. We talking about you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, plain and simple. And so so now they're more or less like we, we're, we're tired of waiting. The, the wait is over. And so for us, because I, when, when I think about what the, was going on in South Africa, I think about us. Mm -hmm. Especially what's going on now with uh, the, our 2020 elections coming mm -hmm. up. And we have a lot of black candidates who have declared their candidacy. And it's like, okay. And their coonery. Right. And now so black people over here are starting to wake up and say, okay. We're not falling for it either because we've been in the same spot since virtually the uh, 1960s. Giving, we've been giving you our vote, the Democratic right. Party, for 60 years. Right. And, and so that's why I said let be like... You know, Julius uh, Malema and the yeah, EFF that. because, you know, nobody's saying it's going to be easy because, mm -hmm. you know I mean, you just figure people who have robbed and killed and just did the whole host of other heinous things to get what they got. Of course, they're not going to say, well, you know what? You got a good point. Let me give it back to you. Yes. Well, you know, uh, let me play the other side. Go ahead. You've got these Africaners. And for those that don't know what an Africaner is, that is a white person in South Africa. Mm -hmm. that, that's what they're called. They're called Africaners. The black people are called niggas. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Uh, um, a lot of them stole that land 300 years ago, and they, and they figure, hey, look, this has been in my family for 300-something well, years. Well, I didn't do it. Yeah, I didn't do yeah. it. Um, even if we did give it back to you, you're not going to cultivate it. You don't know how to do it. You right, don't know how to... and then I've That's seen some, I've seen some slip while people say, too, well, give it back to them so they can run it in the ground. Right. And I'm like, okay, in my house, you can't tell me how to decorate my house. I do what I want, but mm -hmm. just know this, it's mine. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the stupid part about it is how stupid it is. You guys, you guys being white people over there, especially, y'all don't get enough of underestimating black people. Yeah, we would sleep at the wheel for a minute, mm -hmm. but how, how the hell, who the hell you think was uh, cultivating it um, before, before you, you came, came to mm -hmm. it? Came. Who the hell you think was growing all this cotton and shit over here in mm -hmm. America before y'all, you know, took hold of it? Absolutely. So don't be stupid. Absolutely. Um... So, you know, that's one of the arguments that they're saying um, in Zimbabwe, which is the former Rhodesia, uh, when uh, Mugabe threw out the white people, mm -hmm. okay, uh, an argument is going to be, well, the economy is going to collapse, hyperinflation is going to happen. But what, a lot of people, what they don't tell you is the reason why that happened is because the former white slave or masters over there put an embargo against the country that increased all that. And a lot of times they're in cahoots with other nations like yes. the United States. I mean, let's just right. keep it real. So it's not like, you know, it's going to collapse because black people are taking mm -hmm. up. No, it's going to collapse because like you said, it was by design to do True. that. They don't want them to be successful and be a, a prosperous black nation. Right. And so the EFF has fashioned this uh, manifesto and it has um, a lot of key points. And I wrote some of them down because the, the, the document is 170 pages long well, a few of the things that they're addressing is um, land and agriculture, uh, corruption, LGBTQ. I'm not, I didn't get it clicked into it to see what that meant exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, crime, youth development, health, water and sanitation, finance and economy, and uh, social development, uh, among a whole host of other issues that they want addressed. Um, and so I thought of when I, when I was looking at this and just kind of looking at the dynamics of it, I said, wow. That's in correlation sort of to what we're asking for over here um, as um, black Americans, if you will. We're asking for a black agenda. And so what? it, it kind of gave me a, a lot of joy because it's like, okay, what I see is black people, not just over here, but 
everywhere starting to wake up and mm -hmm. we're realizing, gosh, at some point in time, if we just don't take what belongs to us, now, of course, I'm not, I'm personally not advocating for bloodshed, although we know in war, I mean, you're a veteran, so I don't need to, I'm preaching to the choir, there's oftentimes bloodshed, and Malima has, you know, said that, in fact, he has um, been seen and heard saying, shoot to kill, mm -hmm. you know, and it's going to come to that. You know, like Malcolm X was like, by um, any means necessary. At some point in time, we got to stop saying, well, you know, let's just get a seat at the table and talk to them and see if they're going to just give us what we ask for. Um, a point of order. Uh, a lot of people, uh, being on the Africaners, another problem that they're having is, like, the government tried to give them compensation. So the Africaner would say, I want $20 million for this, um, th this property, right? Mm -hmm. But the government would come back and say, we'll give you... Eight million dollars, and Africans like, no, I want twenty. And, Just greedy, and, and they would, you know, the value of the home. Something is better than nothing, but and okay, they won't this leave. This is the part that, it, and which government was that doing that? South Africa. I mean, I'm saying, but the, obviously the ANC. Yeah, yeah, the ANC. But my yeah. thing is, why do we got to give you anything? Why not? Mm -hmm. If you gonna give these people twenty million dollars, eight million dollars, why not give it to black people so they can build? You see how backwards right. that is? Yeah, like we yeah. want to. Oh gosh, white people, we don't listen, we don't want to make you mad. We're gonna give you some money. No, they got all they need. Give this to black people. Right, but the, you know, the white guys are, you know, and that's one of the reasons why why they're not leaving is because uh, you know, that they're trying to hyperinflate their property value and get the most money out of it and roll. I think that's Well, black I mean, if you know, Malim and them have their way, you ain't gonna get nothing up out of it if you don't, you know, yeah. get on and get gone. Yeah, and I also saw a clip of uh, Joseph Molina, and I, I'm a big supporter of Joseph Molina. I mean, I was Julius. impressed. Julius, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joseth. Uh, Julius Molina. Get it right, because yes. that's my that's my intellectual crush. Yes. Okay, I got okay, a crush gotcha, on yes. him. Yes, I mean, the brother's, uh, he's on fire, but he has a, you know, a lot of ego secrecies too. But... Well, who doesn't? Yeah, but he was saying... Uh, you know, they haven't called for mask extinction of whites yet. He did say yet. You know, but, you know, if they keep doing what they're doing, it's just a matter of time. But he also said that, and I saw the video two nights ago, where he was saying, where these white people are, you know, coming up with these stupid uh, rumors, like, oh, you're going to give the land, it's just going to, you know. He said this, let's say somebody comes to you and he's a DJ. The government is not going to give land to a guy who's a DJ who just wants to play music. They're just not going to just distribute land to people who don't know what to do with it. They're I mean, gonna... you give me some land, I'm going to figure it out. Right, right. But, you know, Joseph Lena was like, you know, we're not stupid. Well, yeah. the cold part about that is they know we're not stupid. Right. They know that. And and he also said that the, the fact of the matter is the Africaners have nowhere to go. Yeah, they do. And the Back to where you, where you came yeah, from. And the Africaners have... Uh, Appeal to Donald Trump to uh, step in. Donald Trump, like I'm robbing Espe the Negroes over here. Yeah, we, we, I, especially I as these elections are getting closer and closer. Trump, my view is that Donald Trump is contributing in this debate which is going on, and in the process of contribution, Donald Trump make a similar contribution that were made by white people, all of them, in the hearings, in the public hearings. Donald Trump is not saying anything we have not heard from white people. In all the hearings, I even commented and said, I'm still to meet a white person who support expropriation of land without compensation. So why are you shocked? I see leaders of the EFF and everybody responding to Donald Trump. I don't have time for nonsense. I expected this. And more backlash is going to come. If South Africans are not ready to expropriate the land because they are scared of sanctions, they are scared of black lash. Then don't vote for the EFF. Because you vote for us, we're going to expropriate land. And Donald Trump will come for us. And Britain will come for us. And the EU will come for us. I said, and I said this throughout my life in the movement, that for everything good comes the pain before. If you're not prepared, South Africa, to take the pay, then forget about the land. Donald Trump has not said anything extreme. Things are still going to come. I hope the Zuma group in the ANC, which is supporting this thing, they know the consequences. We know the consequences. Mm. We know that the first response will be killing. They will kill us.
for that. There is a group of white right wingers who are being trained by Jews in Pretoria to be snipers. Snipers. They are not training guns. In the EFF, we are training uh, 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 toy guns. They are dealing with real stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they are training in a farm in Pretoria. We know it. To be snipers. So we know that death is the first price we are prepared to pay. The second price we are prepared to pay for this land is poverty. They will close taps. But if there is a conviction, if there is a conviction and not sloganeering and public opinions, then we must be prepared for everything. It's a war. We must be prepared for Donald Trump and all of them. We are not scared of them. We, are, we, we remain unshaken. Actually, we are more determined after the Donald Trump tweet to expropriate our land without compensation. There is no white genocide here. It's an absolute rubbish to say there is white uh, genocide. There is black genocide in the USA. They are killing black people in the USA. There is black genocide here in South Africa. Black people are being killed all the time. A farmer has been sentenced to life now recently for having killed a farm worker. Imagine if it was a black person sent life for having killed a white person. It will be news all over. But this black person was killed and a white farmer sent to prison for long time in jail. It's once off reporting and it's done. There is no scientific evidence that points to any uh, white genocide in South Africa. It's not true. And we're not scared of such things. We're not going to be distracted by anyone. Only death will stop us. Not Trump, not poverty, not sanctions. We have, we have all of them in our mind. We know the consequences of what we're asking for. We know it. And it's not like we're going into this thing without knowing uh, the consequences. So Afri Forum is the embassy of the USA. If you want issues to reach USA, go to Afri Forum. Then you shall get a proper response. But otherwise, uh, Afri Forum is nothing to us. We're not scared of uh, Afri Forum. Uh, we're continuing business as usual. No, that we are not this. Uh, uh, Twitter revolutionaries mm -hmm. who, who, who say all sorts of things about Donald Trump. If you were to say to them, all of them, let's go to the U.S. Embassy, none of them will come. Mm -hmm. They tweet from their comfort uh, uh, beds uh, with bed heaters. So we, we, we are on the streets. We were fighting this thing on the streets. We are on the picket lines. That's why we're not shaking. We know this is what people want. And if there is anyone who's in this thing without knowing the consequences, then you are in the wrong place. Certainly, you could, you could hear the man is in pain to explain these things in Parliament yesterday. He calls me Musima Imani because he's troubled, he can't even think straight. He's in pain. It is the most difficult thing to explain a policy you don't believe in. How do you say you must expropriate land and give people title deeds? Our people, and I will not disagree with them, if they were to have a paper like this called the title deed, they want to eat title deed. Here is a paper called title deed, yet you remain poverty stricken. And here is a man with money who says to me, Give me that paper, I give you the money to eat now. They will take the money. You are setting our people up for failure when you talk title deeds. Always in politics, you must ask the question, who's raising this and who stands to benefit from this? They are going to give our people title deeds. Our people are going to use those title deeds as surety. 
and they will not be in a position to pay the debt, and the white people will come and take those things. And the story that white people stole the land will disappear, because they will say, no, we took the land rightfully so because they couldn't pay us, they were owing us. So they are going to give you the land and come and buy it from you, close to nothing, because you will not have money, you will need money now. He says the reality is that uh, 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 people who got the houses now and title deeds uh, have not sold uh, the houses. He must go to the RDP houses and go and look for the owners of the RDP houses. Yeah. They are not there. RDP houses are being rented out. The owners of the RDP houses went to squat somewhere. Why? They want to make money. They want to make money. Well, I mean, that all remains to be seen, but at the same time, I mean, it's just like, I, I, again, I'll just keep repeating that. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere by begging the people who put you in that situation in the first place to change their mind. Right. And then why would a sovereign nation, why would we step into a sovereign nation situation and try to up? Well, because we do that a lot. Yeah, we do it a lot. I mean, I'm just saying. But, but, I, but I, you know, right. we do it on the small country. We on a scale as large as that. Right. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean. And white, mm -mm, we're not going to do it. You know, so of course, like every great black leader, you know, there's been, you know, some... Um, why isn't Kamala Harris and Cory Booker not talking about this? Come on. What? Why isn't some of the black leaders here in the United States not talking about these issues? Yes, I'm, I'm they don't want to talk about it over here. What the hell are they going to go way across the water <laughs> and talk about other black people's but, issues? But, but, but you would think Kamala Harris would jump on that and say, look, I'm looking at this. Why situation. was she? She's too busy trying to crucify uh, Justin Fairfax, Fairfax yeah. over here gotcha. over some, you know, alleged... Head. Uh, right. Rape <laughs> allegations. And it's just like, this is just silly. Gotcha. Honestly, gotcha. I'm not saying that sexual abuse is silly. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that. But what's silly is, you know, hanging a man for something you don't even know he did. It's like, golly. Mm -hmm. You know, but anyway, so yeah, I mean, at some point in time, it, it, it just, it's going to go back to where it, it's going to go. It, 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 you could put um, whatever you want in the, in, the, in the place of it. But it is going to go back to its rightful people, whatever that is. That's the just other. the way it works. So, so, so let me ask you this: mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen come May and come this year in your following of this story? I mean, just mathematically speaking, unless some miraculous happens, I don't see the EFF taking over. Okay. Um, it'd be nice. I mean, I think the ANC will hold, I mean, 295 seats. That's kind of, um, that's hard, that's hard yeah, to catch but, up to. But you got to remember, 80% of the people are in poverty, and I think they're kind of waking up. Yeah, I mean, if they can get them to do that. Yeah, I think... Uh, if they can get them to do that, absolutely. I mean, they've got to be on the same page with Julius Malema and the EFF, too. Like, we're sick of it, and we're sick of it, because it's one thing to just be sick of it, mm -hmm. and it's another thing to be sick of it and do something about it. Right. Otherwise, you're just sick of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, we've been working on, and, and for the listeners, real quick, I know this is your segment. I think, no, this, is go very, ahead. I think this is very important. Uh, me and Dee have been talking about what's been going on in South Africa for what, over almost two years now? Uh, yeah. yeah, about a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, we've been kind of right. keeping up on the stories like that. I think it would be very, very good that we actually go down to South Africa. Let's go. And take a look for ourselves and do a broadcast from there and see what's going on um, uh, Cape Town, which is, because I, I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to, <laughs> I don't want to go to Johannesburg. They say it's pretty bad crime and thing that's going on and the poverty. Oh, shit, you should be used to it over here in Edmonton. It's the same damn thing. <laughs> but remember, I'm the Duke over here. It's different. <laughs> I'm the Duke. I'm oh, at the okay. top of the food chain. All right. Chain, so. All right. But um, no, uh, I, I think uh, Cape Town where the, you know, yeah. the area is over there, which is very good and, you know, not very good, but you know what I mean? It's a little bit. They say for tourism, I'm with it. I'm with they want you to do that. I'm and, with and, and I think that uh, we, we, we should make a trek over there uh, a little bit after the elections and see okay. what, what's happening. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. see what's happening for ourselves. I, because I, I, I get tired of people watching us on YouTube saying, you know, these, these niggas over here just talking. We don't just talk. We actually go out and we uh, oh, absolutely. Give, give a firsthand accounting of what's going on. Absolutely. I think that's an, uh, a fabulous idea. And I don't think D will be coming back. <laughs> yeah, I think if you get over there, you okay. won't come back. America, who? <laughs> they should, they'll be like, the new Winnie. Boomaye. <laughs> Boomaye. <laughs> 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 
Well, not quite away. like the new Winnie because Winnie, you know, she yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she, 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 was she was okay, chick. Yeah, she was okay. Um, and she was for Landis, she, you know, that's what one of her things. She was like, this is taking too long. Right. I mean, so at some point in time, we just got to say, yeah, it really like is taking too long. Mm -hmm. At this point, they're not going to do it. Right. They're not going to give us any justice. And it's like, it's, to me, it's crazy. I never understood that concept of continuing continuing to beg somebody who is doing something adverse to you mm -hmm. to stop that they that's what they do that's who they are you're asking people to stop being evil that's just who they are and mm -hmm. so at some point in time you got to protect yourself Self. and say okay me begging them to be nice to me is not working not gonna work i need to do something else take another course of action and so like i said i mean i just i, I can go on and on well, about uh, julius Molino mm -hmm. because i i love and Al, this is, you know, this is, you know, in my mind. <laughs> uh, I just love men who are just unafraid and unapologetic. He's just like, you know, because, of course, you know, the people are trying to kill him. Of course. And they just, uh, that one of the, um, one of the leaders of the EFF just got assassinated. Mm -hmm. um, a, a woman, I can't think of her name, escapes my, my mind, but she was just assassinated mm -hmm. in her home, you know. So... To do these things knowing that your life is in danger, like uh, I was reading that he was, he being Julius Malema was accused of um, uh, physical battery abuse yeah, of an officer. They, every, anything this man does, they, they try to trump up charges But he's like, on. no, that's some bull cocker. Mm -hmm. What happened was they came in my face and my people jumped in the middle because mm -hmm. we know that that's how a lot of times they get two leaders, they cause yeah. a distraction, mm -hmm. stab him up or something, and then he dies. Mm -hmm. And so they mm -hmm. like, no, we got them out the way. Because they came too close. So. Yeah, we, we just don't want to risk it because everybody knows that there's been uh, uh, assassination attempts on his life. And sometimes Ramaphosa might be behind him. I mean, he might point. because if you see, you know, when uh, uh, Malima goes to these meetings and stuff, he is just like, I mean, it's, it, 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 what makes me mad too is this, this lady, I don't know who she is. I guess she's the, the what do you call the speaker or yeah, the speaker of the house. house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's always interrupting in Loki. Don't, don't talk like that. Don't say those yeah, things. And, I hear her. And, and, and then, you know, the crazy part is, I don't know who this white dude is. He's part of the parliament somewhere, too. But he gets up and says, like, while we might not agree with what he's saying, mm -hmm. stop interrupting him. Mm -hmm. Because it it's causing, longer. yeah, and, it, and then people are hollering and screaming. Mm -hmm. He says it just, it, it, it just takes, it just creates chaos. Well, black Let people, him speak. Isn't it funny how uh, black people all over the world are the same? We get emotional. We get loud. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's like, why are you trying to shut this man right. up? Let him say his statement and then sit his ass yeah, down. Not like, and the lady's black. It's like, he's trying to help you ultimately because mm -hmm. you're disposable. No, she's part of the establishment. That's that's the problem. We have the same and, and, problem. And I'm here. glad you said that too because he was saying that um, in the speech that I heard him do this morning. Mm -hmm. He was saying, y'all had your chance. He right. says, you older people, not even necessarily old, like chronologically. That sounds like what I say about the, yes. the handkerchief head here. Yes. And he was saying, the people with the old ideas and the people who are just, let's do Move keep on. Doing, yeah. that's what he says, you guys need to get up and let, let new blood come in there with new ways of thinking because you guys' way is not working anymore. Haven't I been saying that? Yes. In, in, in my political thinking? And I thought about, the, like you said, the situation over mm -hmm. here. It's like... It's the same thing. You got these old people do your John Lewis impression. Yeah, march with Martin Luther King, and we're going to do this, and we're going to pray, and they're going to beat our heads in, and, you know, I, 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 I march with King. You know that, right? Right. right you so go. you got those type of people who want to hold on to, you know, the past, when we, back mm -hmm. in the day when we was marching. I'm going to the bridge. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, that was 100 years ago. Like, you can't continue. You're a footnote in history now. That's like if I have a car from 1965. Classic. I can't uh, apply 2019 technology to it. right yeah it, it's just it's not gonna work I gotta right. do what you know I gotta stick with that way of doing things mm -hmm. and that way of doing things is not necessarily good I might need a new car right I, so right. I can go achieve other things mm -hmm. and so that's what he's saying you guys need to get up let us let in. the next generation in let at least give us a shot. To see if we can go farther, take that baton and go farther. Right. But we can't take the baton and go farther if you don't give it to us. Right. Well, you know, you need to wait your turn. And, you know, that's not the way you do it, younger. Well, and then you got to wait and just well, wait well, for the well, people to... Well, here's the funny thing. We, uh, uh, older blacks here say the same thing. Yeah. Now, Maxine Waters is what? 79, 78 years is old? She? Yeah, yeah, she's up there. Oh, wow. She's about 78 years old. Mm -hmm. We're almost 50. We would be the child of her. Who's we? Well, me. I'm 50. You're about 27. So... 
by the time uh, they pass on, I'll be in my 70s. Right. And that's the problem. And then you'll be like, shit. Yeah, that's the problem. What was we fighting? No, no, yeah, because think about it. <laughs> you know, my idea is, our heyday was the 80s and the 90s. Right. We're in the 21st century now. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm in my heyday still. Well, you're hey. a woman, that's why, so. You know. <laughs> I'm going to be in my heyday until they, the, the, they throw the last bit of dirt Don't on me, okay? Right, right. I'm going to stick my finger up me. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Everybody, when D dies... We're going to get her that, um, have you ever seen those funerals where they got, it's a theme funeral? D's going to be that chick, that that, that old grandma that's in, in, at the table with the right. drink. <laughs> no, I'm going to be, y'all going um, to bury me, y'all going to bury me uh, on my a podcast with my fist up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right. I'm going to have RBG coming behind that's me. It. That's it. All of that. Yes. That's it. That's it. But let me ask you this. Why? Why should we care about what happens to them? What what, what significance is that going to have on us here? Why should we care about the Africans over yeah, there? Yeah. Because well, we, are, why should we, we are one. We are one. We're one. You know, we are one. Frankie Whether Beverly we know, made, yes, absolutely, mm-hmm. a great song. Yeah. Whether we know it or not, we are one, and it's a schism. What happens mm-hmm. to us over here affects them, and vice versa. And mm-hmm. so. Eventually, like Marcus Garvey, his whole thing was let's get, get it was Pan Africanism. Let's mm-hmm. get together, everybody, and you know, the African uh, diaspora, if mm-hmm. you will, get That's together right. so we can go do our thing. Absolutely. And so, it's important we should care about them. I mean, because eventually, a lot of people talk about well, let's go back to Africa. Well, what are we gonna go back to? Because all the shambles, right? Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm sure there's a lot of Africans want to come over here. Well, you know, we hear a lot about well, well, Africans don't want to mess with us, but no, that's not necessarily no, no. true. No, they want to come over here because of the resources and stocking and yeah, taking advantage of the system. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice, though, if they can come over here and come to a black community, which are fizzling out? Wouldn't it be nice if they could come and set up shop? Hey, let's go to Little Africa in the United States. Or Nigger Town, whatever you want well, to call it. I don't it. want to go to that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. uh, you know, but... I mean, I'm just saying, so we you know, we got to care. They, at the end of the day, like, there's a lot of divisiveness going on. Oh, well, they're Africans. They're not really black people. They, you know, they are. So, 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 so let me ask you this. So basically, what you're saying is mm-hmm. what we see going on over there mm-hmm. is a mirror image of what is actually happening here as well. Absolutely. And, and, and if you look at it, it is. It black is. people are oppressed all over the world. We are oppressed so... Really, it doesn't matter where you are. We're mm-hmm. all going through the same thing. And, uh, and as soon as we realize how great and mighty and, and powerful, same thing, we are, that's when we're going to take it back. And I think that's what people, I think, but I know that's what people like Julius Malema mm-hmm. is, is striving for. Yeah. Like you, and the same thing with Marcus Garvey says, up your mighty nation, accomplish what you will. And mm-hmm. so he's saying the same thing. Farrakhan's been saying the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm what, X. What Marla, everybody's been saying the same thing. What's going to happen is going to happen. And we'll figure it out. Right. And, you know, and that's the thing, too. And like I said, I don't advocate bloodshed, but in war, because that's happen. what we are at. It's Maybe not physically necessarily, mm-hmm. but definitely mentally as black people. We are at war, not only with ourselves, but we are at war with the oppressor. And so sometimes... It's going to take a little bit of bloodshed and some unnecessary some things lives. that's not pretty. Mm-hmm. And some, like, what happened to the warriors in our community that wasn't scared to get out there and perhaps risk a life at the worst case scenario? What happened to those people? You want, you want the answer? Yeah. Single motherhood. Well, I mean, but again, we can get into that. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't, it's, it's, in order for a mother to be single, it has to be an absentee father. Right. But when the, when the, uh, the black woman is willing to accept Uncle Sugar's uh I, You know what, though? Situation. You know how I feel about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Uncle Sugar, you know, Donna, I told you to never use that reference again. <laughs> Uncle Whoop Sugar. you. Uncle Sugar. Uh, my thing is this. Yeah, because I, I do believe, and you know, I'm not a feminist, and I do believe that. That is a big block problem. Yeah, and well, we know that feminism, um, and I don't when the no government man. came in mm-hmm. and, and helped uh, escort the black man out the household. Mm-hmm. However, once segregation ended, mm-hmm. So did the opportunities in our neighborhood. What opportunities? Yeah. Our businesses and our unity. That all ended in so... Our skill set. Right. Once that ended, and then you had um, the whole feminism and the socialism come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the black man, hell, I, he can't work. for The, the white man ain't going to hire him as mm-hmm. much as he would have um, when he was hired or had his own business with the black community. And so, yeah, 
Uncle Sugar <laughs> comes in and offers the woman some food, mm -hmm. some, you know, housing yes. and all that. But guess what, girl? Your man can't be here. Well, she ain't nigga, you got to go. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah, so it's a combination of things. Sure. So it's not just, you know, the women. But the other part of that, too, is the point that I was getting at. If the man was a true provider like he used to be, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying it's all his fault, but if he right. was a provider like he used to be, ain't no check the government can give yeah. you in the world is going to have you, unless you're just a dead woman, which there are a lot of out there. Mm -hmm. But the rationally th a rational thinking woman is not going to put her man out the house for no... What is, what is welfare giving people nowadays? Nothing. $400? Not in California. He ain't going to make it. If, you know, baby is bringing home a good check and, you know, take care of the household... I, well, I don't need your money, well, Uncle Sugar. Yeah, well, 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 there was one thing that, that you left out of that equation. What's that? The Vietnam War. That disproportionately sent a lot of black men into a situation where they came back and they're a different person. And, and I'm going to say this, because when I talked to my mother, she said that when my father came back, not that he was like horrifically a bad person, but she said it was not the same person. Right. You know, that came back. And he was, and that, I mean, we had a whole generation of black men that served that, you know, that came back. And if it was somebody like my father who was a conscious objector mm -hmm. who didn't go and, you know, they labeled him as being mentally off because mm -hmm. he was like, I'm not going to fight the white man's war because when I come back, see, my dad was woke very early yes. in life. Yes. Big up to my father. That's right, my but father law. <laughs> but he was more or less like, I'm not going over to fight them people. They ain't did nothing to me. Because mm -hmm. when I come back here, you still gonna spit on me and, you gonna and be racist. And all and yeah, you still I'm still gonna suffer me. the ills that a black man suffers when I come back you're helping you and as we all know now, getting your ass whooped in mm -hmm. Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Um and so they were labeled too. Right. What jobs are they gonna go get? Mm -hmm. You know, it's in their file if they want to go get a good government job. Mm -hmm. It's a constant objector. Oh, he has some psychological issues right. because he didn't want to go fight the war right. to, for his country. And, and as a man, if you if you can't, you come back here and you're uh, affected by that. You you know you're no longer a provider. You're you're not the same person. Uh, and like my father-in-law, they marginalize him on some BS. You know, I can't be a man and, and, and look at your sister and say, "Hey, honey, I got I got the, the you know I'm supposed to bring home the whole loaf, not, right. not not a piece of." It. And so then. You have the dilap dilapidation mm -hmm. of the black Damn. community mm -hmm. where there's no jobs anymore. We don't have any businesses. And mm -hmm. so then that man that you just described who, let's say, went to the Vietnam mm -hmm. War, he's messed up, or he didn't go because he was a conscious objector, he now tries to go get a job with the white man. The, the white job. man is like, nah, because you didn't go fight for the country but we still don't like you nigga or I'll hire you oh my 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 nephew Steve needs a job so I'm gonna have to let you go and you and that's it. how it was and that's how it was and that's how it is and listen so it's a combination of a lot of things right it just is and so that's why I take upset um um I take I don't want to say offense because no, it's too yeah. strong of a word objection uh yeah uh, to when people want to uh, say the ills of the black community is solely to, on the black woman. now. It's not no. solely on the black woman because like I said, you can't have a single mom without an absentee mm -hmm. dad. It just doesn't work that way mm -hmm. at some point in time because when I see, I'm on Facebook, I see people being divisive black woman, this black man. Mm -hmm. I just simply say, stop being divisive. We are all we, we got. We need each other, right? We need we each need other. We need each other at the end of the day. So stop all this, this, that, and the other because I don't care what nobody's saying. Them people that you caping and cooning for don't love you like that. Right. You and, know? And it's very sad when you're in this country and these so-called black leaders don't have an agenda for us. At least over there. Well, they haven't they have needed agenda. to have an agenda right. for us because we've just been going for the low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Like you said, to your earlier point, the black woman is in a home getting us all this socialism. Mm -hmm. um, she has food. She has a roof over her head. The only thing she ain't got is a man. Mm -hmm. You know? And like I said uh, before, when I was watching this documentary, um, one of the, um, the commentators in the uh, documentary was saying, well, the, the woman does, she has the best of both worlds. She has two men, actually. One of the men being the government. Uncle Sugar. Who is the, pro <laughs> the, the, the provider. Mm -hmm. And then you have the man she's physical with right. that keeps putting babies in, in her. her. Mm -hmm. But he is, for whatever reason, the, re the reason that we listed, mm -hmm. he's not able to care for these babies. And so she's got the best of both worlds. Right. I got a man that come over and screw me real good every mm -hmm. once in a while. And then he could drop a baby in me. And guess who's going to pay for it? Uncle Sugar. Uncle Sugar. Uncle Sugar. Right. So... Right. So there's a whole host of things going on. And those are just the things that we need to fix, plain and simple. Right. Um, 
upcoming Thursday, uh, they will be voting on uh, Thursday or Friday. They're going to be voting on the shutdown. What do you think is going to happen with that? That's you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I, the, regarding the shutdown, it's hard to say. I mean, maybe Trump has learned his lesson in that you can't be a whining, spoiled brat. Yeah, right now, they say have a tentative deal, but it's depends tentative, on Trump. Yeah, yeah, because but we know what we hold. The Democrats are saying we're not budging. Yeah, you um, ain't getting your money, boo. Uh, here's the thing: if it does shut down. We're, and you know what? And it's not even a, uh, this is really a, a, like a, a solid if, you know, because it could, it could shut down, but to your, go ahead, finish yeah, your point. Yeah. Uh, if it shuts down, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really joking, but I'm joking. Mm -hmm. Okay. The airlines, oh, no, no, the airlines are saying that there's going to be a problem because, you know, people, oh, yeah, because that's people what got ended affected. in the first yeah. place. People had yeah. affected. They said, we're not doing this anymore. Um, we are a long way from the first. Well, you figure on the 15th, people have gotten paid. Yeah, yeah. So they're, right. they're going to get that. But from right. that point, it might be a do or not. But die. this is my thing, too. Okay? Because now we know that Trump, I mean, we, we, we've we already known, but we've no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Don't you know, no, good. Mm -hmm. We know that Trump don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. You know, to the tune of hurting even his own people, who are his own people, white people. Right. Because there's a lot of white people who work for government, there's a lot of black people too, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of white people, uh, air controls, all kind of people who were affected by this. But my question is this, when you got all that back pay, as to your mom said, though, however, was taxed to death, <laughs> right. you know, did you string it off? Did you say, well, in three weeks, we got another shutdown coming? Right. Or the women, potentially, or, or the people that, that filed for the electronic taxes and got, got a refund uh, ready. Are you going to go trick it off? Or are you going to save it and wait and see yeah. how long this is going to last? I mean, because honestly, I think this is what a lot of us have to ask. I mean, I wasn't necessarily affected by the um, yeah. shutdown, but I eventually wasn't. we all were going to be if it continued to go. I know people who didn't even, weren't, they weren't even working for the government mm -hmm. who were getting sent home early because they couldn't get yeah, their cargo hours. off the mm -hmm. water. Right. And eventually it does trickle down. Everybody gets affected in some way. So yeah, in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people get affected. But the, the question I have is what lessons did we learn from, from the that? last one? Yeah, from the you last know, one. You know, because we, like I said before, we, and not just me, but Donovan has also said, when the first shutdown came, if you were versed even a little bit, you knew that it, it didn't pass in October, and they only extended it until December 22nd. Three weeks. And so how many of those people who were on CNN and on Twitter and all that were at the malls spending all this money not thinking this should, the government was going to shut down. And when it did, you know, the kids got all the stuff they needed for Christmas. But now your ass can't pay the rent. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, did we learn anything from that? Did we say, listen, Betty, <laughs> you better go on and stock up on them beans and rice. Wait, wait, you came in here and saw my crock pot, And I'm right? mad I can't eat it because you got some goddamn <laughs> ham hog in there. Okay, I can't eat it. But, <laughs> Red beans and rice. I'm, re I'm ready to go. But did we, did we say that? Okay, this time we're not going to spend all this money. We're going to... Pay the bills, mm -hmm. and we're gonna live like a shutdown is looming mm -hmm. because, in essentially, it is. Then, what do we learn? Exactly. You know, because after the after the, everybody got their money, it was just like back to normal. Yeah, you didn't hear anything else about it. Even still, we got what three days to a potential shutdown is coming, and you still don't hear people talking about it. But you're only gonna say so that's why. Like I'm in PR. And I believe in being proactive and not reactive. reactive. Because what happens if Trump says he folds his orange mm -hmm. arms and he says, I'm not budging. I will then the government shut down. Then you're going to hear that's being reactive. They asked Kamala Harris about the impending sh shutdown. You know what she said? I hope. That was her answer. I hope. Yeah, I mean, well, she got bigger fish to fry. Now she's trying to become president. Mm -hmm. You know, I, but, but, I ain't going to be affected by I'm going to get my check. But that's what I'm saying. You're a senator. Your job is to pass bills and legislation and fund the government. Make a deal. I, I, I'm the greatest negotiator. I'm the best. So you just leave and you don't, because you, you're not yeah, going well, to Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's, how that's, well, that's how Trump negotiates. Right. I want my way. I want my wall. Mm -hmm. If I don't get my wall, then I'm going to affect everybody. That's what um, narcissistic, yeah. you know, just. It, uh, uninformed, ignorant, dangerous people do. Yeah. They affect everybody. It's, 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 they don't practice utilitarianism. Mm -hmm. They it practice, it's, you know, all about me. me. The other way around is for the greater good of everybody. And you shutting down the government is not for the greater good. It's for me. Right. Because I want to walk. Did you get my point? Did you get my point? Right, I mean, I'm trying like, to make a point. Yeah, well, what, what, what's like, well, what point is you making? And you got people who are literally talking about they're gonna get put out of their house. 
And that's just the fact. And, I mean, and, and just think about that. There are people whose credit has been destroyed. Yeah. I mean, it's just the fact that 70, right. over 70% of Americans are living check to check. It is said, and we hear it all the time, mm -hmm. that the average American cannot afford a $400 emergency. Emergency. I was listening to the state of the, um, the California. Yeah, this morning. Yeah. This morning when Gavin Newsom, Governor Gavin Newsom was speaking, and he was saying it's a, it's a tragedy that 61% of millennials, millennials. millennials mm -hmm. Cannot afford to live here. Mm -hmm. They cannot. Nope. It's to the point to where even all over, the millennials are not even having kids. Because it's like, what the hell am I having kids for? Mm -hmm. I can't, I have, I can't eat. The smart ones. Right. Well, the kind of, the ones who don't want government mm -hmm. assistance and say, hell, I'm having a hard time eating past these time mm -hmm. ramens. Mm -hmm. And so we are living in an era where people are just struggling. So the fact that I hate to hear people say, well, you know, you need to have six months of income saved up. That's easy to say. It's easy to say, especially... When you don't have a bunch of kids or you're not living, I mean, hell, we know we're living in California. It, it, it's expensive to do anything. When the gas goes up or down, that affects people's pocketbooks here in California. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just the fact. And so, you know, a lot of people, if they get to, if the shutdown happens, they're not going to be able to pay their rent on the first. And it's, I mean, it's the long-term damage is your credit rating and the new FICO scores that we talked about weeks ago. That they changed the rules yeah, and how they do that and how they score. If you have some credit card balances, you saw that mess go, go up. up. I saw mine. I was like, yeah, yeah. I paid Wait. off all of mine. I, I got rid of all of mine. But these are things we got that we talk about, and I I got to give a quick uh, shout out to the uh, the new black media for uh, keeping your foot on these people's necks and getting that information out because if people don't believe it or not, this is the way we're communicating to each other. Got to you yeah. know, and I impress upon the young people. You know, if you're going to do YouTube, leave all that silliness yeah, alone. Yeah, I mean, it's cute to be entertaining. Yeah. But if you're, you know, because I was speaking to, I, I, I liken her to my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, um, she's my oldest daughter. Sure, sure. She's starting um, a YouTube channel. And okay. she says she's going to be doing the same things. And, you know, trying to wake up her age demographic, which is, oh, you know, not? 29, 28. She's trying to, I, just, okay. I dated myself. Mm -hmm. Um but she she's trying to she wants to use her YouTube channel to do those things. And I said, well, you know what, you go, girl, because your generation needs speakers and yeah, because you guys are going to be coming up behind us, right? Fact finders, they need fact finders, right? You know, and and you know, uh, going back to to what we're saying, that was the whole point of us starting what we did. I mean, it ain't much to a lot of people, but when I see over fifteen thousand people on the Demetra K show listening to what she says, I mean, that's better than the the the, the let's say, 40 people in the immediate area that you might know. Hell, you know what my model is? If you reach just one, one. sometimes all you need is one. You just need to reach one, one person. If you change one person's mind, you've done your job. Right. I mean, because you don't know how many people that person knows. So just, you know, I always say, like, in our community, we want to, you know, put on this cape and go save all yeah, the black no. people. With, mm -hmm. But if you start at home and everybody starts at home, starts, all the black people yes. will be taken care of. The mathematics add up yeah. as you go down. But, you know, it's kind of funny because somebody did say that, uh, like, like right now they're talking about the Grammys and stuff like that. We don't really talk about that stuff. We're, like, we're not like a gossip channel. we got to get away from that. But that's what the millennials do. We're, you know, well, I'm a little older. You know, your I'm generation. A lot yeah. Your generation do that. But. Uh, we did talk about Childish Gambino when he put that video out. When he Absolutely. first put that out, I mean, we do talk about things that are uh, information sensitive that you might need to know or, or hear about. And yeah. then here it is, what almost what eight months later, or so that he won the Grammy, which is nice. Yeah. It doesn't mean if you're into that kind of stuff. But that video, we was so shocking that we, that you talked about it and was like, look at this video. Yeah, and, and to the point too. Another part I talked about too is as black people, we need to get out of the. Uh, habit of demonizing each other. Oh, he with a white woman. Right. This man didn't have to make no video highlighting yeah. the ills that go on in the black community, but he did. And the only thing we can focus on is he's with a white woman. Right. I don't see nobody saying anything about Her Pamela Harris being with a white man. Yeah, I mean... Nobody he, cares. He could have made a video about dog dookie yeah. if mm -hmm. he wanted to, but he made it about black people to bring awareness to it, and mm -hmm. it did to the point to where nations all over the world were making their own, this is Africa, mm -hmm. this is whatever. Right. You know, and so, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I love Charles Gambino. Yeah. I mean, I don't really care who he's with. Yeah. I mean, it's like Kamala Harris. I don't think it's a big issue. You, you love who you love. You're with the white man, but that's going to affect my vote. Yeah, I mean, I can only speak to who I'm mm -hmm. with. You know, right. I can't right. I can't be all up in your bedroom. Exactly. No, exactly. I don't want to. You know, but, you know, because I, I just noticed Kamala Harris doesn't, she doesn't go anywhere with her husband all of a sudden. 
before she was, well like, she did address that too on a breakfast club interview she was on last she says well i love who i love yes and okay. i'm not going to you know explain that and I, you know what honestly I'm going to go ahead and defend her on that sure. point. Mm -hmm. I don't think she should have to de defend or explain who she's with. Sure. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, what are you going to do? Change these people's minds who are mm -hmm. dating interracial? You can't. It's not yeah. your job to do that. Because I always ask, and I know we got a minute yeah. ago, yeah. I always ask these people who are mad, call people bed winches and mm -hmm. sleeping white and all this stuff. What is you doing with your black ass man or woman? Yeah, you don't want to know what I do behind, behind the scenes. I ain't talking like that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying in general, what is you and your black ass mate doing to save the black community besides talking about people who are doing stuff? Thank you. Like, talk about what you're doing. Right. Stop focusing on what people are doing in between their sheets. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Hey, you guys, uh, Valentine's Day is two days away. You guys, please check out um, Facebook page. Shante Stella and Dot Style Divas. You go to my page. I have a link there. You can kind of li link it up. You guys do not show up to your side piece without some flowers or a gift or something like that. Now, the old lady that you've been with, I got all your kids. Don't worry about her. Get that side piece. Day side piece day. One day they were a side piece. It's February fifteenth. <laughs> yeah. You, get your, you, you 15th. get your gift on February fifteenth. <laughs> right. You the side piece. You the side piece. Hey, you guys. Don't forget to check out Demetri K. On Sundays, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. She's on Facebook Live. We, we got the comments, and she will answer all the comments. I surely will. We'll see you guys again next week. Don't forget, don't believe the hype. Peace. See you Peace. Julius Malema was the leader of the ANC's youth wing until last year when he was expelled for sowing divisions in the party. After that, he formed the Economic Freedom Fighters, a radical left-wing political party of which he is the self-styled commander-in-chief. Next year, he'll fight the general election in April and corruption charges in September. I spoke to him from Johannesburg earlier this evening and began by asking what Nelson Mandela meant to him. President Mandela meant everything to us, uh, the unifier, the father figure, the reconciler, uh, commander-in-chief of Mkonto Wesizwe, uh, the Robben Islander, uh, the exiled, the volunteer-in-chief who went around in the 50s collecting the demands of the people to decide what type of freedom the people wanted. Do you think people really understood what Nelson Mandela was. I think you have recently you have recently emphasized the fact that people should remember he was a revolutionary. We understood very well what uh, President Mandela was. President Mandela was a fighter. Uh, President Mandela was a militant, a radical young person. And we have had an opportunity, some of us, to serve in the same organization he served. Some of us had an opportunity to occupy the same position President Mandela occupied when he was a, a, a young a activist in the African National Congress. And therefore, uh, in everything else we do, we seek to be like him and uh, we understand what he represented uh, as a father of the nation. Nelson Mandela would never surely have agreed with your policy of seizing white farms. President Mandela believed in the Freedom Charter and the Freedom Charter, which he was a volunteer uh, of, uh, says the land shall be shared amongst those who work it. And uh, he believed in the people of uh, uh, South Africa sharing the land. He actually uh, has fought for um, the reinstatement of the land uh, into the hands of the rightful owners. Yours are the politics of Robert Mugabe, not Nelson Mandela. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, our politics are inspired by both. Remember, President uh, 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 Mugabe and President Mandela are the products of the same uh, youth formation. They, both of them served in the ANC uh, uh, Youth League. Uh, and therefore, their struggle has been the restoration of dignity of the African people. And uh, we think that uh, they remain an inspiration to many young people who are actively participating in the struggle uh, for the restoration of the dignity of the oppressed African masses in Southern Africa. You're facing charges of fraud and money laundering, corruption charges. These are surely not the attributes of a leader, someone that wants to be president of South Africa. Look, uh, those charges are... Uh, uh, manufactured by those who cannot uh, 
uh, merge our political uh, 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 our ideas. Uh, uh, they are suffering from poverty of ideas, and as a result, because they are unable to defeat us ideologically and theoretically, they now opt for monkey tricks and manipulate state institution to settle political differences. And uh, I have no worry. I actually believe that uh, within a short space of time, before we know it, these charges will be cleared by the National Prosecuting Authority. Are you contesting seats in the elections in April next year? And if you are, you know, do you expect to win? And will that be a step on the road to President Malema of South Africa? That's true. We are contesting elections next year and we are a government in waiting and uh, I am the leader of that uh, government in waiting and uh, we shall fulfill uh, where uh, President Madiba uh, left. We are here to pick up the spear and continue with the struggle for total emancipation of our people. And we are confident that we are uh, a viable alternative here in South Africa because those who are in power today have undermined the legacy of President Mandela. They are now a self-saving. They are stealing from the poor to benefit themselves and their immediate ones. And we want to undermine that by restoring the legacy of President Mandela, where we bring about an accountable government which will deliver to the poorest of the poor. Julius Mandela, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am.